Welcome back to the Toucan Kingdom, the ever-expanding theme park metropolis. Currently sitting with 21 roller coasters and 24 rides, all in highly themed and immersive environments. Today, we're going to start off by revisiting an older coaster that we built at the very beginning of the series. This is the Gamma Ray. It's an inverted coaster that weaves around an intergalactic planet near an alien space station. Now, when I originally built this coaster, I put a lot of work into the line and the queue and the scenery leading up to the station to get onto the ride. But at the time, my computer wasn't very good, so I didn't put too many details on the rest of the coaster because I didn't want to overdo it and have my computer crash or something. But now, since I have a really good computer and I'm realizing that I can do a lot more in this game than I thought I could, I wanted to revisit this ride and add some more scenery that I originally wanted to add. Starting by plotting some small space stations around the landscape, because we built a really large space station, and that would realistically be surrounded by some smaller towers. And it does feel pretty nice coming back and revisiting some of the sci-fi scenery, because I think building with the sci-fi scenery pack has been one of my favorite packs so far, because there's just so many pieces, and you can combine the scenery pieces in so many different ways to create just like different structures. Like your imagination can truly go wild, it's great. But to reiterate, I feel like I put a lot of work into the station, but I didn't put enough work into the scenery of the actual coaster segment. And one part that's been bothering me about this ride is the first, like, 15 seconds of it are really slow and just creep around a little circle before going up the chain lift. And I've really been wanting to put a alien space station that you're kind of creeping through before you go up the chain lift. Something to really just kind of immerse you into the world before you start the actual coaster. Because we did that for the very first coaster in the park, the Manhattan Project. You're going through the laboratory and seeing them develop some of the things for the atomic bomb before the laboratory gets blown up. And it kind of just immerses you into the ride before the actual thrill starts. So I wanted to do that for this ride as well, but have you creeping through an alien space station instead. And I think it's really cool to just continue expanding onto the station that we originally built because it was really cool. You're like passing through some alien laboratories and you're wondering what's going to happen. And then you got on the coaster and then you didn't really see much scenery. So we're changing that. We're adding a lot of scenery to the beginning of the coaster to make this a more full experience for the Toucan Kingdom. Because we don't slack around here, man. We go all out. Well, now that I reflect on that, I have to... Uh, act. We do kind of slack around here. But I need to change that. So, one thing I've been slacking on is I have not been keeping good enough notes about this park. I haven't been writing things down and writing and tracking information. And that's kind of a problem. I should have more information tracked down. So something that I'm going to do is over the next couple weeks on Twitch, I'm going to be doing some live streams. And I'm going to be re-watching the whole Ultimate Theme Park series on Twitch and take notes on things that I talk about during the series. And things I need to write down is I need to look at names for rides. I haven't written down all of the names for all the rides, so I'm not really even sure what all of these rides are named in this park. Uh, some certain ideas or certain things that I've talked about but I never followed through on, so I need to just like remind myself on things that I need to do in the park. And I also just want to kind of document this series a little bit better for myself because as this series has kind of progressed, it's turned into a much more deep project than I ever anticipated and I never really put the infrastructure in for that and it's kind of stressed me out in relation to this series so I need to write more things down so I can more seamlessly make episodes of this series and talk about this park without kind of getting confused or not like knowing stuff because I should know everything about this park but I don't. I built it but I don't remember everything that I've said about it and I need to like just kind of reflect on my videos and see what I've talked about on the series so I can make sure there's consistency with the things I talked about in previous episodes and what ends up happening in the current and future episodes. And then something else I could do in the process of rewatching all the episodes is I could take notes of things that I could do on my next building session to make older parts of the park better because the first things I built in this park were built with the knowledge, the limited knowledge that I had when I first started playing this game but I learned so much while building the park. So there's probably changes I can make to older portions of the park to make them even better. And also just things to personalize it more. Things like adding images and pictures and graphs and things to add on to the scenery. Custom scenery that I have downloaded now that could be added to older portions of the park to make it even more detailed and in depth. 
I also just like want to fill out older portions of the park with things that add more life. So for example, more like food stands, drink stands, vending machines, trash cans, benches, flowers, pots, things that just like make it more full and make it seem like every square inch of the park was really just like cared about. Cause there's a couple theme parks I've been to, like Knott's Berry Farm, for example, where it just feels like they care about every square foot of that park and they just put scenery and landscaping and flowers everywhere and it's just beautiful. And I want this park to have that same vibe, but this park is super duper large. Now it does worry me that I like am adding this many details, but like I said, I'm just gonna keep on detailing this park out until my computer can't open it up anymore. Um, what I am hoping is I can still get to episode 75 and finish all the things that I went to and make a series of videos riding every single ride and fully touring the park out in its most detailed experience. And then what I'll do after doing that is I'll just continue making bonus videos just adding on to this park until it eventually can't be opened anymore, which... Will that ever happen? I thought it would happen a long time ago, but we're still going strong. And like when I'm playing this game and not recording it, I get pretty good frame rate still. <laughs> like it's still not even too bad. The only downside about playing the game and having my park this large is the autosave. The autosave happens every 10 to 15 minutes and it takes like a full 45 seconds to autosave my park. So what I usually do when I'm playing the game is I just will kind of do like small workouts, like push-ups, sit-ups, and other workouts in my office while the game autosaves. And it just kind of keeps me active while I play Planet Coaster. It's pretty funny. <laughs> the autosave isn't bad if you have a normal sized park, but since this park has a billion pieces, it takes a long time for my computer to save all those. So I just spent some time and I smoothed out some sections of the Gamma Ray and made the coaster just a little bit better because I just noticed some parts while riding it that felt a little bit off to me. And I also went and changed some parts of the Manhattan Project that bothered me as well. Because <laughs> I've, I've ridden these coasters quite a few times, like sometimes I'll just pull up the park and ride the rides and just kind of to try to inspire myself to build. And there'll be parts of the rides that I notice aren't perfect, so it's kind of nice to go back and change those because I still have the opportunity to. Might as well make them perfect, <laughs> or as good as I possibly can. It is pretty hard to make rides that feel perfectly flowy in this game. You have to pay really close attention in detail sometimes to make these coasters really satisfying. All right, next we're heading over to Super Mario Land, where we are going to be finishing the details for our Super Mario coaster. It doesn't seem like there's that much more to do, but trust me, we have a lot of work cut out for us. <laughs> this is a longer video, as you can see, and for good reason. So we need to finish decorating the outside portions of this coaster, we need to finish inside the station, and we also need to build the boss fight area where we fight Bowser. We need a lot more details there. Now working on this gets me pretty excited because I live in Los Angeles, and they are about to open up the Super Nintendo Land in Universal Hollywood. Now, Super Nintendo Land is opened up in Japan, but it has not yet opened up in LA. But I actually made a friend whose name is Thomas. He's a YouTuber himself who makes uh, Mario Kart Home Circuit videos and some Let's Play and Long Play videos. He's also a mechanical engineer and he works on scenery. He builds scenery and helps engineer it. And he's done it for several theme parks around the world, including Universal. And he got to kind of help out with some of the scenery that was developed for the Mario Kart ride. And he was telling me that the Nintendo Land in Universal should have been opened by fall of 2020 but because of covid it got pushed back and now it should be opening by the end of 2021 and i actually met somebody and they were at universal recently and they were able to buy some mario kart merchandise which looked really good honestly it was some really good mario kart merchandise and i had never seen mario kart merchandise that looked that good before and they told me that they bought it at universal and that they were selling it to kind of hype up the nintendo land that was coming out soon and I'm like, dang, it must really be coming out soon. So once that opens, I'm really excited to go and check it out. I'll probably even vlog it since I'm kind of the Nintendo theme park guy. It would make sense. <laughs> but yeah, I am super excited about that. Getting to have a Nintendo land pretty close to my house is going to be awesome. I also have written a couple Mario raps. Maybe I should film a Mario rap music video at Nintendo Land and Universal. That might really be a good idea. I just thought of that right now, but that might be the move. Something else I always wanted to do is I, I wrote a Pikmin rap 
from the perspective of Olimar, and whenever I moved to LA, I wanted to record a music video at Disneyland in the Bugs Life area, because they have a area that's themed as Bugs Life, and it makes you feel like you're a bug, because there's a lot of giant like leaves and grass and stuff that make you feel like you're really small, and so that also goes along with Pikmin, so I thought it'd be cool to go there and film something, but like right as I moved here, they closed it down because they stripped it all out and built the new Marvel Academy there that just opened up recently, which I do want to check out. I heard it's really cool, but I'm still going to miss the Bugs Life area. I love Bugs Life, and I like areas that make you seem like you're small. One time when I went to Disneyland, they had a 3D Honey I Shrunk the Kids like movie type of ride. It wasn't a ride, but it was like an interactive film experience. Do they still have that there? Or are they completely stripping out all of the rides that make you feel like you're a bug? I don't know, but rest in peace, Bugs Life area. You will be missed. Now they just have the Pixar Pier, which kind of just includes a bunch of references to all of the Pixar movies that they have, because there's just so many Pixar movies now. In Disney, they just keep on buying all of these IPs, and Disneyland doesn't have enough space to expand to include all of the new IPs that they have. Well, I'm thinking about it. I feel like I heard from somebody at some point that Disneyland actually has enough space to add another whole entire third section if they wanted to. They just haven't taken that big of a step yet. But that would be so cool. If Disneyland in California added a third section or a third park, that would be, there's so many new ride possibilities. Something else they're doing is Splash Mountain. They're remodeling that to be after the Princess and the Frog, which is pretty great because the Princess and the Frog utilizes a lot of the same animal characters that is shown in Splash Mountain in the first place, I think. So the whole entire transformation seems to like it'll be pretty seamless. And will it also include a movie that's more current? Wasn't the Princess and the Frog the last Disney movie that was made with hand-drawn animation? Like the old style of animation? And since then, everything has just been 3D models? I kind of hope they go back and make some hand-drawn animation movies in the future, because those just have a specific charm to them. I love them so much. That's why I love the game Cuphead. Cuphead's great. I, I have a couple of Cuphead scenery pieces in my custom scenery pack. I'm not going to make a Cuphead ride, but maybe I'll make like a Cuphead restaurant or like a small little Cuphead themed thing. I have like a couple scenery pieces that I want to use for just like theming out restaurants, which is one of the reasons why I want to go back through the whole entire park and kind of just like re-detail out old things. Because I have so much custom scenery now that I could integrate into some of the older builds that we've made in the past. Because I don't think custom scenery came out for this game until... I'm wanting to say around the 40th episode, which was around halfway through the series. So yeah, there's so many possibilities to revisit there. And if you're wondering why I'm not talking about the scenery here very much, is because this is the third episode of me working on this Mario area, and I've kind of exhausted myself talking about Mario games and Mario scenery. So this is me pretty much just finishing this area up because it needs to be finished up. But this isn't a Mario Let's Play, so I'm not trying to talk too much about Mario because I don't... Uh, I don't really want to talk about it. I do want to talk about theme parks though, because since things are reopening back up finally, it's been great getting to watch theme park vloggers again, especially my boy El Toro Ryan, that's been great. And then also Taylor Bybee from Coaster Studios is just releasing his documentary about RMC, Rocky Mountain Construction, one of the best American manufacturers in the country. And I cannot wait to watch that. It's been getting really good reviews. Apparently the cinematography is great. It has a lot of interesting information and testimonials from the engineers at Rocky Mountain Construction. And I'm just so excited to watch that and hear about the future plans from that company because I'm a big fan of that coaster company. I love all of the coasters that they've made and I love how they're pushing the boundaries on coaster development and just making really, really fun coasters that are breaking records left and right. So yeah, I haven't seen that yet myself, but I plan to watch it in the very, very near future. Super excited about that. And props to Taylor for creating something like that. He's making schmoves and his cinematography is on point for coaster cinematography. I love it. I love just watching artistic videos of roller coasters, just showing their architecture and their beauty. The modern marvels of engineering for sure. But yeah, so theme parks have opened up again. I've gone to Knott's Berry Farm three times in the past couple months, and it's been great. It almost feels like normal again. 
They don't really make you wear your mask since you're outdoors the whole entire time. You have to put it on if you go inside like the restaurants or shops and stuff. But yeah, when you're in line and stuff, you don't have to wear it. And all the rides are at full capacity now. It's not like whenever we were in the thick of it and you had to be spaced out like five feet in all the coaster trains. And that would suck sometimes because there would be like two or three empty seats in between each person to like have space for COVID, which is kind of fine, I guess. But the biggest problem about it is it just makes the lines go so much slower since the trains are at 50% or at a third capacity because of the COVID restrictions. So I'm glad we're getting to a good point now because people are getting vaccinated. I have been vaccinated myself. I got the Pfizer vaccine and I'm just ready for the world to get back to normal because I want to go on more roller coasters. <laughs> oh, and then look at these little hills that I put on the back of the IMAX theater. I had this huge white wall, so I wanted to do something to make it not stand out as much. And I made the little hills with the eyeballs and they're so cute. It's weird how they're just like little cylinders, but then you add the eyeballs and it makes them 10 times cuter because <laughs> they're just so innocent. Although it also is scary, because if you think of that one scary movie, The Hills Have Eyes, mmm, now I'm seeing this in a whole different light. <laughs> I don't like it. This also makes the scenery for the Baby Park Mario Kart track look a little bit better. So the background wasn't the best. I'm so happy with the go-kart baby kart recreation. That's such a little gem just like plopped into there. Now I'm going to use these cloud animatronics that are moving back and forth and just kind of fill up the, the skyline of this building. I love this, it's like I'm looking at a two-dimensional Mario level from the side, it's amazing. The, co the combination of 2D Mario and 3D Mario. Feels like it's Mario Odyssey a little bit. And get a little fly through of all the stuff we just built. It all pulls together pretty nicely. We got the inside of the station decorated. The first half of the coaster has been decorated. Now the next thing we gotta work on is the Bowser Castle segment, which is this whole underground segment that we have down here. Our goal is to make it spooky, and we want to fill it with fire and thwomps, and just make it seem like Bowser's underground fortress, but in 3D. And I'm gonna surround Bowser in fire, because he's a dragon that blows fire. And I want to surround him in the blue fire, because I always thought it was cool in Mario 64 how he would blow the flames everywhere and you'd have to dodge the fire flames. So I wanted to recreate those and just have them sprinkled everywhere. And they also bring some light to the room. And they make it seem so scary. Something about blue fire is just scarier than red fire. Maybe because it's hotter. And just the thought of the fire being hotter just makes it even scarier because it would burn even faster. And then also Bowser being a lizard is a segue to something that just happened in my real life, which is I was going out on a walk. I was walking through a random neighborhood in California and I saw a chameleon on the sidewalk and he scurried over and started climbing an electricity pole. And I was like, what in the world? You don't find chameleons in the wild. And I started watching him and I was filming him for Instagram as he was climbing the pole and he went up like eight feet. And I was like, oh crap, this chameleon's gonna climb up this pole and either get electrocuted or fall off and die or get eaten by a bird. And I was worried about him, so I took him home I had to carry him a full mile home, but he was nice. He didn't bite me, he didn't scratch me, he was great. And now I have him as a pet. And I named him Google, he's pretty cute. I'll post some pictures of him on my Instagram. If you wanna go follow me on Instagram, it's at Tyler underscore Cedarwall. Would appreciate a follow there. Sometimes I post animals, sometimes I post scenery, sometimes I post selfies, sometimes it's dance videos, sometimes it's thirst traps. What are you gonna get? I'm not sure, but you should follow me there anyways. <laughs> But yeah, so I have a pet chameleon and I was feeding him live crickets today for my first time and I saw his tongue for the very first time. It's so long. It's like seven or eight inches long. It just flicks out and can grab a cricket, pulls it into his mouth and it crunches away. It's so cute. And it reminds me so much of Yoshi. Literally, it's like Yoshi's tongue going boing, pulling a full ass apple in and just eating it. But I feel like we were meant to be together and the chameleon is perfect for my house because I have tons of tropical plants for him to climb and to grab onto, and he'll be loved here. And we already had a case to keep him in. We had to spend like $150 on stuff. We had to give him a heat lamp and a UV lamp, a bunch of crickets and bugs, and some ladders and stuff for him to climb on. But he seems to be liking his environment, and I'm happy he's eating. And he pooped for his first time, which is so cute. 
And it's just so exciting because a chameleon is not an animal that you just find and just keep. But we did, and that's something that happened. And it's great because normally chameleons are expensive. So we could have sold them technically, but I couldn't sell this guy. He was too cute, and I wanted to take care of him. And I don't have kids, so I can afford to take care of a chameleon. But yeah, that was a really fun surprise, and now we have a new housemate. Super exciting stuff. If any of you guys have owned a chameleon before, feel free to leave any important tips down in the comment section below so I can raise him with the best possible care, because I want to make sure that I do this right, and I don't want him to get hurt or be stressed or anything. I want him to live a happy, prosperous life for the rest of his life. I'm not sure how old he is. He seems like he's at least a few years old because he's fully grown. Oh, and I named him Google, mainly after his little googly eyes, but I thought it was a cute name and he's a cute chameleon and I love him so much. But yeah, here we are, we're just lighting things up. You know, after you build anything in Planet Coaster, you have to add a ton of lights or else it's gonna be pitch black during the nighttime. It's just how this game is, but hey, it's not that bad. And everything's so pretty during the nighttime. I feel like I can't say it enough, but I just love the lighting in this game. Everything looks so good. At night, whenever the sun's going down, just the different times of day, it's all such a good combination. Also, I just want to take another moment and thank the people who made this custom scenery again. All this custom Mario scenery looks so good, and I'm so happy that those people imported the models into this game. It feels good to have a Mario themed coaster in my park because I've always wanted to build a Mario coaster this in depth and I finally have gotten to do it. And there's just so many different animatronics from the thwomps, the piranha plants, all the Koopas, Toads, bob Goombas. We have all the Mario characters. I even have some more animatronics and statues as a surprise coming up later in this episode. Yeah, late into the episode we have some surprises coming, believe it or not, so you don't want to miss it. I will say that I do my best to make sure that every minute of this series, from the first episode to the last, is full of something somewhat interesting. I always try to be working on something or decorating something to make every single moment of this whole entire playlist and series something to watch. I also love the forest surrounding this Mario world. And even this coaster right here, I think adds some good negative space because there's a little bit of forest blocking the Mario world and it makes it a little bit more immersive as well. We have rides and coasters filling up most of the sections of this park, but we still have nice negative sections to kind of keep things spaced out and to make it feel like there's some natural nature there as well. Because people appreciate some nature, it's good to have that like negative space to decompress. And here's the new models I was talking about. We have Wario and Waluigi. And then we also have some Toad Houses, which was a nice surprise to find in the Theme Maker's Toolkit. And I decided to take some of this negative space I was talking about and add some toad houses to make it seem like there was just some toads living back in the forest. Because I'll tell you what, after playing the Paper Mario games, I've realized that toads will live pretty much anywhere. They love expanding their civilization. They're trying to procreate and take over, I'll, I'll tell you what. They're ruthless. But it's okay, because we're also ruthless. <laughs> I think. But yeah, we're really at the last segments of adding details to this Mario Land. Found this little Bowser statue, and I put it outside of Bowser's castle entrance to kind of mark that it's Bowser's home. I don't know if this looks quite right. Maybe I'll place it above the track at some point. Cause I can always come back through. Sometimes I like am editing back the footage and I'm like, mm. I think of like new changes that I can make. Yeah, we're just adding coins and just trying to fill up more extra space, bring some life to the area. Thought it'd be a cool idea to bring some arcade machines into the little information stand past the ride. Come in while your friends puking in the bathroom. You can play a game of Galaga. It's perfect. I also love these brick blocks. They're so good as transition pieces. You can kind of put them anywhere and they work because you just find them everywhere in Mario games. So theoretically, I can place them anywhere that I want in my Mario land. But yeah, this building's looking pretty good. <laughs> we have to hire somebody for this information stands because most of the people who work in this park get Really mad that the park has been under construction for so long and they're just having to work and wait for customers to come through. <laughs> Anyways, we are completely done with the Mario Land, I presume. Maybe like 99.9% .9 done. So we're gonna head over to the other side of the park and start making some more headway on the Asian theme section because there's just so many more details that we need to add over here that I keep slacking on. 
So we have this roller coaster, which is kind of the kids ride for the park. And this is gonna be named the Dragon of the West, named after one of the best prophets in the whole entire world, Uncle Iroh. So yeah, it's gonna be an Avatar themed ride, loosely. Not a whole lot of Avatar references, but I have a few Avatar pieces of scenery. I have these like banners and like representations of the Fire Nation and different nations. So I kind of sprinkle that in there because it kind of blends it all in together. And I really want an Avatar themed ride in this park because I love the idea of this park just having a bunch of IPs just kind of like thrown into it. Not just the IPs owned by one company, but it's just like franchising now different IPs and different, it's like kind of like collaborations. It's a theme park IP collab. It's beneficial for both sides. It benefits with brand awareness for the IP, but it also benefits our park because people want to come in and see their favorite IPs brought to life. And if you don't know what IP means, IP stands for intellectual property. That is like a video game character or a fictional universe, this intellectual property of a company, uh, whoever invented it or whoever the inventor of that property sold it to. Like how Notch, the creator of Minecraft, sold it to Microsoft. He sold the IP to them. Anyways, I've used the word IP a lot in this series. Hopefully you've known what it meant. If you didn't, now you do. Anyways, as you see, I manipulated the terrain underneath the chain lift of this roller coaster because this is supposed to be a kid's roller coaster and it went pretty far up in the air during this chain lift and I didn't want that. So I decided that if I lifted the ground up around the chain lift and made it seem like the coaster was on the ground the whole time, kids wouldn't be as afraid of the ride. I feel like Disney does this a lot with their roller coasters. Like they go high up in the air, but it doesn't seem like it because the supports aren't very long because there's like terrain around it. So we did that and I think it also helps tie the Asian area into the mountain. Kind of gives a more transitional phase instead of it just all of a sudden being volcano. But yeah, it's looking pretty nice. I added a bunch of cherry blossoms to really just add some color to it because it looked a little bit too dull. And I'm adding a couple little towers with some roofs to just kind of segment things out a little bit. This Dragon of the West roller coaster doesn't have too much scenery. This is kind of one of those rides that's a little bit more scenic. You want to enjoy the nature and then just sort of the Asian architecture, some of the pagodas in the background. It's kind of just given a tour of this land that we're putting together, which has been taking me quite a while. I feel like this Asian section has been like a little background project that I always come and work on at the end of each episode. So there's probably a lot of people who only watch the beginning of the videos that don't even know this section of the park even exists in the first place. At some point I'm going to start one of these episodes showing off this section of the park and they're going to just be flabbergasted and just say, wait, what? There was an Asian section of the park? When did you work on this? And the answer is after the 15 minute mark on every single episode. <laughs> And I'm also excited for the next episode because we're going to be building another roller coaster with my friend TWD. It's going to be inside the volcano and it should be one of the most thrilling coasters to date. And it's going to be terrifying. So stay tuned for that. And I also have a comment question of the day for you guys. My question is, when is the last time that you played Planet Coaster and what were you working on? I'm wondering if you guys play this game yourselves, or if you're regular builders, or if you're just watching my videos, or if you used to play but don't play anymore. I was like, let, let me know. When's the last time you played Planet Coaster? The last time I played Planet Coaster outside of building this park has been a very long time. Probably since I did that one tiny park challenge. But I'm starting to feel like I'm on the verge of doing another Planet Coaster series that's not this park. Because I really want to. And I'm just like really spread thin at the same time because I do a lot of series. But yeah, pretty much the end of this episode is going to be dedicated to placing my favorite scenery piece, rocks. <laughs> it, it quite literally is though, because you can do so much with this. Just rocks are beautiful, honestly. Just gigantic chunks of stone. Damn, I could look at these babies all day long. And if you've been enjoying the music from this episode, I will let you know that the video is Pikmin and Chill. Pikmin has some of the most chill music ever. And speaking of chill, I have one more surprise for you this episode. I got an Olaf scenery piece for Elsa's ice jump. Yay! But here's the exclusive first peak of Super Mario Land. First beautiful fly through. We got Mario Kart. We got a chain chomp. We got Wario and Waluigi. It's kind of small. 
but it packs a punch. The Mario coaster is what makes it. This is what you come for. The stuff leading up to the coaster is just some of the icing on the cake. The line for this coaster looks a little bit bright during the daytime. It'll look much better at night. Still looks good though. And just as you exit the station, This is a very long coaster, which is one of the reasons I love it. It just keeps going. It weaves back and forth. You gotta remember, this is a kid's coaster. So I would say, overall, this is a pretty good length coaster for a kid's coaster. I mean, if the kid's afraid of roller coasters, they're gonna hate the length, but that's okay. Anyways, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.